Hi everyone, I am Janine Samuel, CEO and President of Sideline Prep, and I am so excited because we have a treat for you today. We are at one of our Sideline photo shoots. We have been here going on almost nine hours. <laughs> we got here bright and early in the morning, and we wanted to actually show you how to get the pro cheerleader look. And we're gonna focus mainly on your makeup. So this is Ashley. She is our makeup artist. She's been with us for a couple of years now. We absolutely love her because one, she knows how to do makeup, but two, she also knows how to take care of skin, and three, because she is a former cheerleader. She cheered for the Washington Redskins cheerleaders for five years and was a captain for two years. So she definitely knows what it takes to get the pro cheerleader look, and she is going to take you step by step on how you can achieve that pro cheerleader look as well. Now here is Shantae, she has agreed to be our model for makeup today, and then once she's done here, she's obviously gonna hit the runway <laughs> and do her photo shoot. So I'm gonna turn it on over to Ashley. Do you have any allergies? No. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna prep this skin. I like to use a rose water because it's very hydrating to the skin, um, and not very many people have any allergies to it, but I just like to confirm with them, close for me. Get the skin nice and hydrated. After I've primed the skin, I'm gonna go right into foundation. Take about three pumps. You can always add pumps if you need more, starting at the jawline, just to make sure the color matches. Chin up from the back. Looks great. So I'm doing downward strokes because that is how hair is going to grow on the face. And on the areas where there's a little bit of a blemish or whatnot, I'm just gonna dab that into the skin just to get a little bit more coverage on that area. Once I've placed that layer, I'm gonna buff that into the skin with round circular motions just to really get it in there. It's warmed up with the skin at this point. You wanna take it all the way down so that there are no lines of demarcation. As I'm doing that, I am not going above the orbital bone here because with eyeshadow, there's going to be fallout and it's gonna make you look like you have a black eye. So you're gonna have to get rid of that anyways. We're just creating the perfect foundation for every other step. I even like to take it over the eye because it does even that area out, some people have veins or discoloration on their eyelids. So I want to use all of that foundation that I have and here we have a beautiful even canvas. From there I'm going to go into brows. I like to frame the face and set the face before I focus on the eyes. With brows I like to start at the bottom, outline that shape. I'm using powders from Anastasia Beverly Hills. They have a wide variety of products. Um, I prefer powder because it gives more of a natural look. And I'm just following that pattern of her brow. And then in the top here, I'm just gonna work up. And just refine it at the top. Really drag that tail out. And there we have a beautiful, clean, crisp brow. I'm gonna do that on the other side, turn for me. As I do that, I like to rest my finger to balance. Go ahead and look at me. And then from here, I'm just gonna make sure that they are even in the center. Brows are not perfect, but they're related. So they still have to look alike. Beautiful. So now I'm gonna go in contour and essentially cut her face with lines to break up the face. Turn for me. So as you can see with contouring, anything dark you wanna place where there would be a shadow. Just looking at her now, I can already see that there's a shadow and that is where I wanna put this contour. With contours, you wanna use a matte powder Shimmer is going to be reflective. We're not trying to create a reflection here. We're trying to create a shadow. Go ahead and turn for me. Straighten for me. 
I also like to do a little bit of a contour to her forehead. Um, she has a wonderful forehead. It's not too big, not too small, um, but just to kind of draw attention to that center part where the light would naturally reflect. I'm gonna contour outside of the brow. Thank you. And a little bit above the forehead, not to make her forehead look any larger. If we wanted her forehead to look larger, we would not contour, only on the sides if we wanted to, to make it appear larger in the center. And I'm gonna actually connect that to this contour here. Beautiful. And from there, we have already done the outline of the face, and now we can go into color. I always prep eyes with a, tw I use the Smashbox 24 hour photo, photo primer, photo finish primer. It is going to bond the eyeshadow to the lid without creasing and without worrying that it's gonna sweat off. Turn for me. It's clear, so you're just gonna apply a gentle layer. So every product that I use on the skin is going to be for wear. It's gonna be for sweat, tears, happy or sad ones, and for camera ready. So the foundation that I used was my Makeup Forever Ultra HD. It's gonna photo very beautifully. It's gonna lay a perfect finish on the skin without any added shimmer. If you add anything with luminosity to the skin, it's gonna make you appear sweaty. And if you're already sweating, you don't wanna look sweatier. Sweatier, more sweaty. So now I can see that that has dried. What colors are you wearing? I have on like a sequiny blue and black. Blue and black? Okay. Mm -hmm. So the colors that I'm gonna choose for her are gonna be very neutral. You don't wanna do any colors that are going to take away from what you're wearing. You want it to complement you and your features and all of your coloring as well as what you have on. So just like I did a contour with the face, you wanna essentially do a contour to the eyes too because there is hollow ground that you want to create depth with. Open for me. I like to do eyeshadow with the eyes semi-open um, just because you're not gonna be walking around with your eyes closed. So we need to see how it's gonna wear with your eyes open. Starting very lightly, I'm just dusting a very natural tan shade into that crease. You don't wanna go above the crease because then that will look unnatural. And I'm not taking it all the way in because she doesn't have a large lid. If we took it all the way in, it would cut the lid shorter. So we wanna keep her eye looking nice and big and beautiful. And I'm doing circular and windshield wiper motions until that product is completely blended into the crease with no harsh lines. So just like I created contour on her face, we created it on her lid. Using that same furry blending brush, I'm gonna go right into a deep brown. And to make her eyes appear a little bit larger, I'm gonna place this deeper color on the lid. So as I'm doing that, I'm blending it into that beautiful tan color that we placed in the crease to create a little bit of an ombre effect. So we're gonna give her a sultry, yet natural, smoky eye. More product is all, not always mean more, better. And then I'm gonna go back in using the same brush and that tan and just blend it out in that crease. Put it back where I want it. Back to the brown. And as you can see here now, her look is almost complete with just two eyeshadows. With this, her eyes look big and bright and beautiful. And then to highlight that, we're going to put a shadow on the brow bone. and just make sure you blend that out. 
Open for me. Beautiful. From here, I'm going to go underneath and I'm using that same brush that I used for under the brow. And then from here, I'm gonna go underneath. I like to use a black or dark brown for this. I'm gonna use a black for this just to keep it very smoky. Look up for me. With a lot of eyeshadow, as you'll probably see here, and it's happening as we did the other brown shade, it's falling. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Just using this smudge brush to get right up under that lash line. If you can tell there's excess product, you can flick it off, off the brush. And I'm just smoking that all the way into the eye. So now she has this beautiful look, but it's fallen down here and created a shadow. And we don't want shadow there. So that's when I go in and grab a fresh makeup boy. Look up for me, babe. And just get rid of that, clean that off. If you mix concealer into that, you're gonna look like you got punched in the eye. For concealer, this is my favorite. Concealer is very important. You wanna open up the eye and brighten up the eye. I like to use a very dense round brush. Look up for me. And with concealer, I also like to do some highlighting on the areas where light would naturally reflect. And I'm just gonna mix that just to give it a little bit of a deeper tint. With this, I like to go right up into that smudge and do any cleanups now at this point with the concealer. I take it from the edge of the eye all the way up to, to create a very bright eye that is raised appears more open. And I'm also shaping the brow as I'm doing that. So as you can see, it's nicely blended around the eye area, but the edges aren't very blended. So from there, I'm gonna take that foundation brush that I initially used and just soften those edges and blend everything together. From here, I can also see that now we have a bold eye. It's time to add color back to the cheek. From here, I can always go back in and add more contour, which I usually like to do, just to deepen it and make it match. Plus, I wanna clean up, put back where I did some cleanup. You can always go back in with that foundation brush to soften those lines the entire time you're working on the face. So I'm just going back in those same areas and deepening it and softening those lines with that foundation brush because it will still have some product on it. Using that same brush that I used for contouring, I'm gonna go ahead and go in with a blush. Be careful with blush. You don't wanna do anything that's gonna be too warm and too red because if you're dancing and you're sweating or if you're prone to a little flushed, if you add warmth to the skin, you're just gonna look very overheated and very hot. So just as we aren't doing anything with a lot of shimmer all over the skin to look sweaty, we also have to keep in mind that if we were to be sweating, there would be heat. So I'm choosing a peachy, Blush, smile for me. Blush is gonna go right on the apples of the cheeks and just add a little pop of color. Just on that apple. If you find that you took it too high, swipe down. You do not want blush to go over the orbital ridge. This orbital bone is our stopping point. We also don't wanna bring it too far in because then it'll look a little dirty around the nose or the mouth. Clean up with that brush, soften those lines. We want a natural blush. Awesome. So now we have her face set. I'm gonna go in with mascara. Because this is not her mascara, I'm using all disposable, sanitized and clean products. I do the bottom lashes first. Because if we were to do the top first, if you were to go back to the bottom 
and look up, you would get mascara all over that beautiful eyeshadow that we just created. So we wanna do the bottoms first, let those dry, and then move to the top lashes. Take a peek at my shoulder. From here, I wanna gently pull on the eye to lift. And do a little wiggle to cover all of those lashes. You're doing great. <laughs> And making sure that we're always using waterproof. Test your waterproof products um, because sometimes when you sweat, there's salt involved and the salts can break down the product. So you wanna make sure that they are waterproof but can work through your sweat. I love this mascara because it will and it will not transfer. Now her lashes are primed and I'm going to prep her lash, her strip lashes. I highly recommend a Demi Wispy lash. It looks great on just about everyone without being too subtle or too dramatic. It's that perfect glamorous length and fullness. Just peeling that off. I'm gonna paint the lash glue on the band getting pretty good coverage on it. And then I'm gonna set these lashes down to dry because we want that glue to get tacky. If we put the glue on while it's still wet, the lash is gonna move all over the place. Your client or yourself is gonna be very uncomfortable because it's gonna settle into the eye. It's gonna mess up the makeup. They're gonna move around. So we wanna make sure it gets nice and tacky. You can also tell as it's drying because the color will change. At this point, I'm gonna set the under eye so that that doesn't move, and I'm just using a banana powder. And look up for me. This way your foundation and concealer doesn't run or shift. It is set. And it gives a brightening effect as well. I like to take it into the eyeshadow just to clean up some lines with a natural color. Then I'm going to go in again while these lashes are drying and we're gonna highlight. And to highlight, I'm gonna use a very natural shade. It's just a little bit lighter than her complexion. Turn for me. And as you can see where I'm going to highlight is gonna be where I can already see from here, light is reflecting. It's gonna be that top part. So as we contour underneath in that depth, we wanna highlight the top of it. I'm using a fan brush because it's very dainty and I can just dust it on top. And as you can see, it just made that cheek pop. I love this product because it will not make you appear sweaty. It's not glittery. It's a very pressed pigment with shimmer. You can always add more with any product. Start light. Once you put something on, it's harder to take it off than it is to add to it. I also like to do a little pop on the cupid's bow above the lip and sometimes on the bridge of the nose. Not too much again so we don't look sweaty. At this point our lashes should be nice and tacky. So I'm going to take the lash, I'm going to use slanted tweezers and just open your eyes for me. I'm going to have you just look down. Turn. You don't want to do it while your eyes are closed because then they're going to be a little squinty and they're not going to lay evenly. I always start with lash application on the outside to middle and work its way in. With my tweezers, I'm just pushing it down to that lash line to get it as close to the lash line as possible. If you are not comfortable with tweezers, using your fingers is perfectly fine. And again, I'm just pinching it so it can get as low as possible, being very careful. I'm gonna do the same with the left lash and down, outside to in. Lashes tend to pop off on the outsides. So if you do have to go back in and re-glue it in the inner corners or outer corners, be sure to do that before you go on stage or on the field or court. Beautiful. So I can see this one's a little high. I'm gonna, while that glue is still tacky, I can still readjust it, place it where I want it to go. And then sometimes from here, I'll just use my fingers to push it in so that it's really bonded on the inside. 
So from here we have a beautiful lash and I'm gonna go in and line that lash line to hide it and fuse it with the lashes. I always do mascara first. You can go back in if you need to touch up and wiggle a little bit of mascara to the lash, but you can reuse your lashes multiple times if you're constantly putting mascara on them and not your lashes. It's not gonna blend as well and you're not gonna be able to reuse your lashes multiple times. So from here, I'm just gonna go over that band and having her look down, I'm just gonna take a liquid felt tip liner and do a slight line over the band. Just keep looking down because it's a little bit wet. While you're doing your liner, same as with mascara, you don't want to look up because it can transfer from your lid to the top of your lid, destroying your beautiful artwork. So with liner, I usually start on the outside, work my way in, and then go from the inside and meet in the middle. From here, I can see this one's a little bit fuller than this one, so I'm gonna add to this one to balance it with that one. And I'm gonna take this liner all the way in, open for me, to bring it all the way into the eye, make it really pop. Look down again. And I want to make sure that these lines are clean. We don't want wobbly. I know it's really hard. Usually when you're doing your own makeup, we'll tend to tug a little bit here just to straighten that skin out. That is totally fine. Once we do that, though, we're going to see fingerprints where we did that concealer. So going back in, I'm just going to touch that up. Anywhere that I touched and maybe did a little smudge. So we're gonna do a very subtle, natural hint of burgundy tinted lip. I love lip liner. Don't ever be scared of lip liner. It's not from the 70s. It is live again. Liner is gonna be great. It's gonna control your lip color so it doesn't run out of your lip lines. And it's gonna create a beautiful frame. We wanna frame everything as we're contouring, as we're highlighting, as we're doing brows. Everything is framing for the picture on the inside. I'm just doing gentle feather-like strokes. I like to do liner a little fuller on the lip at the top. Just like we would contour, we're gonna contour the lip as well. Light would naturally go to the center, so I'm not gonna fill that area with lip liner. I also like to fill a little bit on the sides because it'll make your lipstick stick. It has something to stick to. Part your lips for me. Now I'm gonna go in with the lipstick. And this lip color definitely complements her eyes. They're neutral enough that we can add a pop of color. We don't wanna do too much color on both. We wouldn't wanna do a burgundy eye, a strong burgundy eye with a burgundy lip and a burgundy outfit or too much of one color. We definitely wanna complement the colors and just like we did highlight to the face, I'm gonna do a little bit of a highlight to the lip, just in the center here. Now that she's done, I'm just gonna take a brief overview, do any touch-ups. See that her bottom mascara has kind of vanished in our setting powder. Everything is dry, so she can look up and away now. see that these lashes aren't making good friends so I'm gonna make them become friends and add a little bit of mascara just to those bottom lashes just to get them together so now we have our completed look she is ready for the court the field the stage I'm just gonna go in now and use a setting spray. It's like hairspray for your face. It's just gonna make everything stick and last you. It's gonna work through your sweat. Make sure you set your makeup. I'm just going around in a circle to set it. Of course it's like, and again, just going back, spit a little bit, softening everything with that foundation brush. If I notice that at this point, there's still a little bit of a shine that I wanna correct, 
I'm gonna go back in. I love banana powders because they don't add a lot of color and can be used on just about everyone. We don't wanna add color when we already have a perfect color because it'll change and compromise the product. So I see that now that she is set, we're gonna add a little bit of powder to her chin, on the nose, a little bit in the forehead, mostly all the areas that we did highlight and didn't contour. Some of that mascara touched. I'm just gonna smooth that out of the way. And voila, she's done, she's ready to go. And now her look is complete. She is ready to hit the stage, the court, the field, the arena. If you have any questions in regards to skincare or makeup for your pro cheerleader look, you can always reach out to me. My name is Ashley Elena on Facebook. My Instagram handle is at Ashley Elena MUA. And if you have any other general questions moving forward to becoming a pro cheerleader, don't forget to check out sidelineprep.com and on all social medias at sidelineprep.